Hi, I'm Dr. Gabby Cora, and we're at the National Publicity Summit here with a colleague of mine, Dr. Marianne Block. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure to be here with another physician. And you have a very, very interesting way of looking into, you know, being that front gate with patients who come in as a family practitioner. So take it away. Well, I started out a little bit late in life. I went to medical school at the age of 39 after doctors made my daughter ill with psychiatric drugs for her bladder infections. So after that, I decided I needed to become a doctor to protect my family and learn what doctors know. So that's what I did. And help many other kids and from getting sick, right? Absolutely. But the main thing I did after that experience was that, because I really learned to think out of the box. And that's what happened because of what happened to my daughter. I had to take a different attitude and, and look at medicine a little bit differently. So when my mother was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer and given two months to live, I had to think out of the box again. And I did. And instead of being dead in two months, she was cured in four months. So I take that approach with my patients. To me, they are my family as well. And I want to find the cause and fix the problem. I don't want to just give drugs to cover up symptoms. You don't like the Band-Aid. You don't like the Band-Aid approach. You know, there is a time and a place for the Band-Aid approach. If somebody's wheezing, I'm going to give them an asthma drug. Mm -hmm. But I'm, then I'm going to find out what's causing the asthma and what can we do so that you don't have it that often or at all. Right. What did, what did you used to do before you became a physician, before you went into medical school? Because there was a life before and I'm sure you kind of put it all together. I was a homemaker and mother, and that's all I ever wanted to be. And that's why you wanted to take good care of your family. Exactly. I really saw going to medical school as the ultimate thing for a mother to do. That if that could happen to my daughter, it could also happen to somebody else I loved. And in order to protect them, I needed to know what doctors knew. So going to medical school just seemed the natural thing to do. Wonderful. And you've done a lot of work around chronic illness as well. I have. Uh, some people don't think of chronic illness always as things like asthma or ear infections, but when you have something over and over and over, it is it is chronic, and often it is not a drug deficiency, but a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. I've also worked with uh, kids that have been diagnosed with ADHD, mm -hmm. and I've been able to get them off the drugs and actually correct the symptoms so they can go on about their lives. And I. Uh, work with women who have been uh, put on antidepressants for depression, and the same thing is true there. I find the cause and fix the problem. In fact, that 17 million people are diagnosed with depression every year, and I contend that most don't even have it, because hormone imbalances, hypothyroidism, even allergies can make you feel depressed. So it's important, in my opinion, to find that cause, fix that problem, and don't just write a prescription, you know, for with the symptoms. So Dr. Block, I'm assuming you take quite a bit of time and energy with your patients. So what does your practice look like in yes. that respect? I spend an hour with a new patient at least. And they fill out a 15 to 18 page history form before they come in. So I go back and look way back on a child. I'm, I'm going to look before birth and see what was going on. For an adult, I'm still going back pretty far to try to figure out when did this start uh, what was going on at the time. You know, I see particularly where the depression thing goes, uh, women, and I ask them, well, when did you first have this problem? It's almost always in puberty, or during or after my first pregnancy, or in menopause. Hormones. <laughs> so doing that and spending that kind of time and asking those questions and digging deep really almost makes it easy to figure out the real cause of the problem. And it, it gives them hope. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I go home with a smile every day. Oh, that's so wonderful. So, you are a physician, you are an educator, you are also an, a speaker and an author. Yes. You're, I know you're promoting your last book. What is that about? The last one is just because you're depressed doesn't mean you have depression. I see. Yes. And is it out already? It is out. How yes. can people get a hold of it? Yes, they can. Uh, my, my website is blockcenter.com and it is available there. It's also on Amazon.com or in any bookstores. Wonderful. So it's available everywhere. And is there anything in particular you'd like to share with our audience? Yes, I would really like them to think, um, you know, there's a lot of talk about asking the right questions of your doctor, but it's not just asking the right questions, it's even knowing, well, what's the right answer supposed to be? And educate yourself, and if you 
don't get the right answer, then keep digging or find somebody who will give you that answer. But one of the most important things that I can see in Dr. Block is that you care. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you.